Welcome to the Bill Cartwright Show with Steve Cohen. Our special guest today is USF alum, Kit Bennett. Ken, welcome Morning. to the show. Ken, let's talk about this. Um, you played a little bit after me. Seems like a lot longer after me, but just a little bit after me. Uh, talk a little bit about where you grew up and talk about uh, your mom and dad. Well, I grew up, I was born in Belize. A lot of people don't know that. But I was born in Belize and I came to the U.S. when I was three years old. And I was raised in um, South Central L.A., about two blocks from USC. Um, that's a place I used to go to when I was bored, just walking around, um, messing around, goofing around on campus, just want to get a feel of the campus because everyone talked about USC, USC, USC. Yeah. So I grew up around there. My mom and dad are, um, were hardworking parents. My dad, you know, you see him, you don't see him in the morning because he leaves before it gets, you know, light comes up before sunrise and then you don't see him until it's dark. <laughs> and it's still the same way. He's due to retire, I, I believe, this month. So he's been working for the same company for 40 plus years. Um, immigrants, you know, immigrants are really hard workers. And once they uh, get a hold of something that's going to provide for their family, they're going to commit to it. And that's what my family did. Uh, my father works at a place called Principal Plastic. It, it's a place that makes uh, plastic products and such as um, maybe golf um, products and rain shoes and, and things of that sort. And my mom worked at a um, convalescent home with uh, older people to provide aid. And it's been a, it's been a lot of up and down, but growing up, there was a lot of distractions, but basketball was the one thing that kept me uh, uplifted and in a straight and narrow. If it wasn't for basketball, who, basketball, who knows where I would be? It was just something to do, and you got a lot of appreciation from other people while doing so. Can you talk about what kind of kid were you in high school uh, on that subject? And really, who kind of mentored you and guided you to uh, to be the player that you became? Yeah, basketball was know, it's kind of a love story because it was, it was a savior. You get a lot of um, <clears throat> positive feedback from people, a lot of support. How's basketball doing? How are you doing in your schooling? Um, it was more, it's more, it was more uplifting to be a part of something positive rather than to be a part of something negative and you can get in trouble by doing so. Uh, my hero is my head coach. Um, my head coach is a very familiar person in the neighborhood. His name is Reggie Morris. He won a state championship back in um, 88. And that's in California. So we had to come up north to beat uh, Bishop O'Dowd, you know, at the Oakland Coliseum. And I was wow. like, very exciting time back then. Uh, but he just he just taught us work ethic paid off. Don't cut corners. Show up on time. Um, be a good student in the classroom. You work hard, it will pay off. He was very hard on us to the point where we didn't understand why he was so hard on us. Um, but as a grown man, we understand why. He was teaching us, if you work hard, it will pay off at some point in your life when you get older. And it has for most of us, um, you know, uh, having us doing from suicides to uh, practicing after games. If you felt we didn't play hard that game, um, it all it all comes back to gratuity once you think about it and you get older. Um, he's a champion. I still talk to him to this day. We played golf together last February, and now that he's retired, he he DJs on Sundays on YouTube just for fun. Um, but he is my hero. He will ever forever be my hero. And I love him to death. Awesome. So as you're about to leave high school, um, 
what are you thinking about colleges? Um, I was terrified, truthfully, but I was happy because I had lots of options. I had options to go where I was receiving. My senior year, I was receiving letters from everywhere, and I still have them today. Those letters are from different colleges, from USC to UTEP to you name it. Um, but I had a lot of options. I went on a recruiting trip to UTEP, Creighton, Kansas State, uh, USC. Uh, but I wanted to get out of the city. I wanted to ex explore and do something different while well, I had the opportunity to do so. And I chose Kansas State. So I, I signed a letter of intent with Kansas State. That's when Lon Kruger was the head coach at K-State. And uh, his assistant was very um, forthcoming and honest with me. Um, I just like their situation and their setup. The gym is, is beautiful. The campus is, is great. And I wanted to be away from home just to kind of get a different experience. Um, so after I signed in March, uh, a couple of weeks later, there was a an all-star game where I, I was uh, to be a part of. We had all kind of high-level guys on that team from Tracy Murray to Mitchell Butler, Zan Mason to Cherokee Parks. It was an amazing uh, group of Southern California guys that was on that team. So me, I tore my ACL during the game. And that was devastating to me because I didn't know what would happen afterwards. I knew I would, I would have an uplifting um time to get back on track. And so um, the coaches at K-State wanted me to go to a JC before I go to K-State because I'm, I'm thinking they don't want me to take up a scholarship for one year. So I went to a, a JC called Butler County Community College in El Dorado, Kansas, of all places. You know, to go from South Central to uh, El Dorado, Kansas is like, like being lost. It was something I wasn't prepared for, but I wanted to change. And that's the change that I got. Um, that conference is one of the best, back when I played, that conference was one of the best junior colleges, camp, um, conferences in the country. Most of the guys from any one of those teams usually go to a high level D1 school. Um, it was great. I wasn't too far from K-State. I did go to a few K-State games when I didn't have a game, so I was able to kind of keep an eye on them, see how they were doing. Uh, but it was tough the first year at Butler sitting out, uh, uh, rehabbing my knee. Um, and then the next year, I did okay. It was, it was more mental for me because I had to trust my knee again. I had to reprogram myself. I didn't do too well, and then so I decided to come back home and go to L.A. Harbor. So this is my second year playing. Uh, so I went to L.A. Harbor, did really well. Was one of the top guys in um, J, you know, junior college in California. Um, did really well, got a lot of looks. And then a USF alum, which is one of my pals, Alvin Brown, the late Alvin Brown, who's also a Don, who passed away from a heart attack a couple of years ago. He was recruiting me along with USF uh, assistant to play at USF. And they came to one of my games, took a look at me and said, hey, we want you to be a part of the school. And that's how I ended up at USF. Great story. I, I just was going to ask you, like, so what happened at Kansas State, though? Once you left Kansas, you just said, you know what? Were you embittered that they didn't honor the scholarship? You know? I wasn't bitter. I was... I was, I was a bit confused, but I think they pretty much moved on. Um, I think by the time I was ready to go to Kansas State, Lon Kruger and, and the assistant that recruited me went to UNLV. And I didn't have any contact with them. They didn't call me. And I didn't call them. So I just kind of let, let it go and kind of moved on. So talk about your first impressions when you were at USF. Um, different, only because I've never really been to San Francisco, except for that game when we played and beat Bishop or Dallas. <laughs> Didn't really know much about it, but, you know, the bridge and it's cold and it's foggy. Um, my recruiting trip went really well. It was pretty much an automatic. Um, 
just a matter of this, you know, signing documents and getting getting ready and squared away for the season. But my experience at USF um, that first year was I was I was ready because of my um, my path that got me where I was. I was ready to to lead and I was ready to win. Um, some of the guys that had been there before me, um, I don't know what they've been through because they've been there maybe two years before I have. But right away, I came in as a leader and I came came in as someone everyone would say, okay, I, he's ready to play. Everywhere I played, I've always started. It doesn't matter if you start or not, but everywhere I started, everywhere I played, I started. I, you know, I started in high school, um, started in junior college. I started in um, universities of USC, USF. Um, but to be a leader and to lead by example was something I was known for in the huddle. You know, when you had to put someone in check about, you know, blowing a coverage or a play, that was me uh, getting on top of everybody. Um, it was a great experience. Um, it, it was great. Everyone took care of me as far as, uh, Everything I needed, I, I had it. Everything I wanted, I pretty much got it. Um, and even after USF, when I didn't graduate because I needed more credits, I was still able to work for the school in the dorms and still had my, you know, my room, board, and my books. Everything was still taken care of when I graduated in 95. Awesome. Hey, talk about, uh, real quick, talk about your coach. Mm. And talk about some of your teammates. And where did you live on campus, by the way? Or did you live on campus? Yeah, I've always lived on campus. Um, you know, I would, I would have loved to have lived off campus, but it wasn't an option at that time. I lived at, I um, forgot the name of the dorm, but the one where the bookstore was originally at, underground. Well, that was feeling. Yeah, feeling. But that, so, that, is, that is now Burl Tour. Uh, it changes. So... We've always had roommates at, at, at Feeling until my last my last year. So I would always have to have a roommate. And you know, this is a small space for big guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. It was, it was, not, not everyone was clean, but I, we had some stories that I can't talk about. Um, not everyone was clean, um, but my last year we were able to get our own rooms. Everyone was excited about it. Um, uh, it was an amazing experience, but now guys live off campus, but maybe the, the freshmen and sophomores, they have to stay on campus for more support and so forth. Um, but Coach Bravelli is an amazing coach. Um, for me, I don't really like change, but I know change is going to happen from time to time. Same with my current job. I don't like change when it comes to supervision like my boss. Like I've always had a steady pace of um, coaches that are head coaches that stays during my period while I'm playing. And Bravelli was there for all my two years I played there. Um, awesome coach, um, great work habits. He'll hold you accountable. Um, always give it 110%. So he really didn't get on me as much, but he would want to get on me to uplift everyone else when they're not meeting their, their stride. Um, but awesome coach, great you know, great person. Um, I worked far, I, you know, I worked far, hard for him while I played at USF every minute I played. Uh, as far as my teammates too, um, most of the guys I still talk to, as you can see when I'm out at games, uh, we always take pictures and check on each other, but we communicate through text or we'll call periodically just to check on each other. Um, more frequently, um, I, I, Orlando, was, he was a senior when I we was a senior together. So we, I came in as a junior. He was already a junior. So we had a close relationship. And I haven't seen him since I graduated until this last weekend. We were talking back in September, like we were saying, uh, okay, USF plays a doubleheader in Arizona. Let's get together, play some golf, you know, catch up. And that's exactly what we did. We played golf for two days. And we went to two exciting games. So that was a tremendous opportunity to connect with your fellow uh, teammate. And also, you know, see other, see how everyone else 
everyone else was doing um, while they were away. It was awesome. It was awesome. So you're about to leave USF. What are you thinking? Do you feel like you can continue to play or what are, what were your thoughts? Um, I, I was, I was, um, I leave it all on the floor. I don't hold anything back. I know basketball is not going to you know, be around forever for me because of, you know, knees and back. So you have to kind of make a foundation for yourself as far as um, your future is concerned. I didn't want to play around and go overseas and waste years playing and not have that um, stability when it comes to work. Uh, I was terrified. I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. Even if I had a degree in my back pocket, you still have to figure out what you wanted to do. So, you know, I went home, kind of wasted maybe like three or four months. And then I, um, I worked for a temporary agency for a year and a half. They had me do different assignments. Uh, I used to catch the bus downtown. Then I finally saved enough to get a car. And then I worked for a, um, a place called St. Anne's. It's where pregnant teens go um, when they need somewhere to stay. Kind of like a group home. So I did that for two and a half years. And then I got a job with the county of L.A. And that was very exciting. And that's where I'm at today. So it's going on 23 years this February. Uh, working as a gov working for the government as a supervising children's social worker. Stevie, you want to jump in there? I think that's amazing. No, I and and so you got a degree in social work, Kent. And what motivated you to, you know, to to pursue this field? And what were some of the what are some of the most rewarding things about working in that area? Actually, sociology. Um, got a degree in sociology. Well, I, I kind of see the mannerism of my, my mom. She, she used to like helping people. Um, so I wanted to do that also. I wanted to um, be someone in the middle to mitigate and find solutions to problems when it comes to child welfare, when it comes to family, the family dynamic. Not every family is perfect. Um, some families do need a support system and some type of intervention. And I wanted to be a part of that. And that's what I've been doing ever since. So you had an opportunity to watch our current dance. What do you think? I'm jealous. Um, <laughs> I am totally jealous that this overall, the, the campus is more beautiful than it was when I was there. They get cool shoes. Um, the, the, the locker room is awesome. It was awesome when I was there, but it's even awesomer. Everything about it is awesome. You know, and now the athletes have the ability to profit in some way when it comes to athletics. I think that's even better. But they have a bigger stage than, than we did when I played. Um, but I'm happy for them. Um, I, you know, a lot of times the, the younger guys, you know, Bill, you can say this too. The younger guys don't know how hard it was when we played, especially when you played too. You paved the way and I paved the way for the younger guys and look at where we are now. So as a whole, I'm excited for them and things will get even better as time passes. Yeah, this, and this is a really special time with all the um, training that you have, great training facility, great locker room. Um, you know, it is something, I mean, we never had a weight room. Um, we didn't have uh, a strict fit conditioning coach. We didn't have anybody to tell us to eat right. Uh, we were just eating whatever we could <laughs> and just happy to get it. So it is It is a really special time and a, a great transitional time. And you talked to her earlier about your, um, we know one of your hobbies is golf and that's something we're gonna get around to later, maybe, uh, no, we won't let Steve play because we exactly. want to have a exactly we, we want to have a reasonable round. I'll be your caddy. But uh, um, is that is that your uh, is that your main hobby? What you really like? Yeah, that and I like I like I like building. I like framing. 
uh, when it comes to wood, you know, two by fours and so forth. Um, so during the pandemic, I built a shed in my backyard. Building, I'm, wow. Love that. That's tough. Um, yeah, so I plan to build a, a office in the backyard, maybe a 10 by 10, 10 by 10 by 15 office in the backyard, hopefully soon. But that's something I, I really like doing. You know, getting the framing nail and pop, 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 pop. Wow. I could not be trusted, and Steve definitely not, to be able to do something like that. Definitely not me, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that is a real talent. Now, where does that come from? Um, nowhere. It's just something I, I, I see and I like it. It's interesting. Um, I, when I was used to be younger and going to campus at USC, I used to see, you know, how architecture build the houses out of those sticks, like a model home. Yeah. I used to like that. That's what kind of drove me to like to build. Oh, interesting. So uh, talk about your family a little bit. Well, my, my family dynamics consist of my, my wife, um, two daughters, two sons. Um, we've been together for 20 years now. Um, um, two of my daughters are in college right now. One is 18, one is uh, 21 years old. Uh, my Oldest daughter wants to work in the computer field. And my youngest daughter is um, more interested in real estate or nursing. So she's kind of undecided right now. And my two older boys are working right now. Now, do any of your kids play sports? No, oh, not even a, a second, no sports. Wow, interesting. That is really interesting. Not that there's anything wrong with that because there's so many other things uh, in life that are, that are special. Uh, because you were such an athlete. I saw some pictures of you at school, too. You, you were a lot better athlete than me. And forget Steve. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's very exciting. Stevie, I'm going to give you the last shot. Um. You know, I think uh, what's what's one of the most important things you got out of USF to this day that you remember? Um, it's so many. Um, the school is, is very supportive uh, to their student athletes, to all, you know, all students. But we're not just student athletes. We're still uh, students, but they always keep you connected. And always keep you involved. And I think that's a per that's a really good asset to have to keep the program going because the older guys, they see little things that they don't want negative things to happen to our school. So we always be involved in some aspect of, you know, whether it's before the season or after the season. There's always a discussion going on. But they always keep the guys involved. I want to say also, Bill, you know, I'm 6'6", six, six, and we had guys that were 6'10", and, you know, 10 feet and 7 feet tall. But can you believe I had to play center for the most of my season? Center. Because, oh, the bigger guys, was they didn't really have the heart to play center. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people don't have the, um, the knowledge to be able to do that. I would have motivated them to nasty them up a little bit. That's that's what they need. Right. Guys are too happy. You got to nasty them up. And it, it sounds like you had a college or a high school coach that got you right in the right mindset of how to compete. So you were fortunate. Yeah. Yeah, right out of uh, junior high, I started um, my, my freshman year. Back then, you were you came in as a – 10th, 11th, and a 12th graders. So we had three years, not four, where some schools have freshmen, sophomore, junior, and senior. We just came in as uh, sophomores. And I played against a lot of high, high profile guys that went to the NBA, like Chris Mills, um, Bruce Bowen at Fullerton. We had a pretty good class um, back then. 
uh, when I played. Um, Chris Mills, JD Green, um, Mitchell Butler, um, Bruce Bowen. It was very competitive during that era when I played. But I, I still I, I played out of position. I probably should have been maybe a a three, but I had to play five because the guys didn't have a heart to play five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, a lot of guys don't know. They they don't know, and and uh, that's why uh, that's why you got to crack them, yeah. nasty them up. Once once they've been nasty up a little bit, then they understand. Yeah. Of of, of 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 just how to play and, and what it takes to play that position because you you cannot be uh, uh, anything but aggressive. Maybe yeah. soft. Yeah, yeah. And my advice is what uh, Steve always says: it's better to give than to receive. <laughs> I totally agree. Exactly. I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for being on. Uh, Thank you, Ken. It was yeah. great. Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, at one point in time, when I get my body right, my back was sore. I would have loved to have played some golf with you guys, but I, there's no way. But, uh, yeah, we got to get out there. we gotta hit, got to play. Uh, I, I got a lot of balls, so uh, I, I, I'm going to lose some, but, uh, but we're going to have fun. 